Turn to Proverbs chapter 4. So we're going to talk about the word is medicine and how to use it today. My goal is when we finish this, you'll know what it is, you'll know how to use it, how to apply it. Amen? Does that sound good? You know, you go through, uh, you go through CVS, you go get your, your, your whatever they're going to give you there, and you, you sign for it, and then the pharmacist says what? Do you have any questions about, do you understand how to use it? Do you understand how, well, and if you didn't, you should, well, no, how often am I supposed to take it? And she'll tell you, and, and all those kinds of questions. So when, if the word is medicine, we've got to find out how are we going to use it. Proverbs chapter 4. Are you there? Move down to verse 20. <clears throat> my son, doesn't mean to leave the girls out. My son, my daughter, pay attention to what I say. Listen closely. Listen closely to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart. For they are, what? Life to those who find them. And what? Health to a man's whole body. The word is health to a man's whole body. Now, if, if I've got a, a, a vitamin or something that, that I know will help you and I give you a, a package of, of, of sitting on your shelf, it's not going to do you any good. You say, well, you know, I bought those things, but, but my body is not, is not healthy. Well, see, in the natural, I know that if it's going to work, I've got to take the medicine. God's Word says that the words, uh, there's things He's going to tell us to do, but if I'll do them, there's life in them, and there's health to a man's whole body. The Word of God has contained in it the ability to bring health to your body. The Amplified Bible says, My son, attend to my words, consent and submit to my sayings. Let them not depart from your sight. Keep them in the center of your heart. For their life to those who find them, healing and health. Those are two different things. Healing and health. To all their flesh, keep and guard your heart with all vigilance and above all that you guard, for out of it flow the springs of life. The Message Bible says, those who discover these words live, really live, body and soul. They're bursting with health. Whoa. My, 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 my. Now, listen to this. The Art Scroll Mishli, I know some of you read every day through the Mishli, which is the Proverbs, the uh, commentary in the Proverbs from the Jewish perspective. Let me read a quote from, from the Mishli. One cannot expect to attain something without investing time and effort. Boy, does that speak to this generation? I want an instant answer to this, an instant answer to that. Give me a pill I can take. Boom! I'm all, you know, I'm all fixed up. Uh, give me on, you know. One cannot expect to attain something without investing time and effort. If a person tells you, I have labored in the study of Torah, but did not succeed, do not believe him. Only if he says, I've toiled in the study of Torah and have found, can you believe him. The sages, that's all over the mission. I just pulled out one spot. It keeps popping up. Let me put that into contemporary evangelical Christianity. If someone tells you, well, I'm reading the Bible and I'm studying the Bible and I'm not getting better, don't believe them. Right. Don't believe that they're doing what the Bible says when it says diligently pursue these things. Don't believe them. Because if you do it, you're going to get the results. See, see, doctors can't be fooled about some things. They give a medicine to somebody and, and they say, in, in natural sense, I'm not talking about what happens when you apply the Spirit, but just in natural sense. Somebody goes and they have a, medita uh, a, a medication they're supposed to take and they come back and the doctor says what? What's his first thing? Are you taking your medication? The person says, oh yeah, I take it regularly. And the doctor looks over the top of his glasses and looks at the lab report and looks over the glasses and he, he knows you can't be taking the medicine because the medicine should have these certain kinds of effects. I'll tell you how you can override that, by the way, in the spirit. But in the natural. Amen? It, it, see, in other words, he doesn't believe you. So, something, something's not right there. You can say it all you want. Oh, you might be taking them once in a while, but you're not following directions. Now listen to the second thing from the, from the Art Scroll Mishli. Quote, one who studies Torah audibly is far more likely to retain what he learns than one who studies silently. One who studies the Bible audibly is far more likely to retain what he's learned than one who studies it silently. 
So you, know, you go into a, a seminary like I went to, and let, we're all going to study a scripture, and we're doing something. So you see us all in there. You know, we're future pastors or whatever, and we're sitting there. We all got our Bibles open with our notepad, and what are we doing? You can't hear a sound in there. It's like a, like a library. You go to a yeshiva, yeah. <laughs> and there's, there's 30 young men in there, and they got their Torah scrolls open, and there's a buzz going through there, and there's sound in there. You even, uh, when we were in, uh, in Hebron, remember that young boy that was there the year we were there, the young boy standing there, and he's doing his prayers, but he's also reading Torah. And at one point, even though we're over, the, over there, he's reading out loud. The paths of the righteous is like the first gleam of dawn, shining ever brighter till the first light. I mean, he's not reading for our attention, but he's verbalizing so his own ears hear. That is the biblical instructions of what it means to meditate the Word. The word meditate on the Word of God means to murmur, to murmur it, not to think it. If the devil can shut your mouth, he's won half the battle. Let's have a silent prayer. What on earth is a silent prayer? Go home and tell your spouse silently they love you, you love them. <laughs> you know, when your boss a a asks you a question, give them an answer silently. Now, I mean, you know, what is this silent prayer? Prayer is, you know, it's, excuse me. You know, there's, there's conversation taking place. And so it is, one of the values in reading the Word right is literally reading. It's like the word Shema here doesn't mean just hear with your ears. It means to hear and obey. Because if you truly hear, you'll obey. If I say, there's a fire in the building, get out. If you truly heard me, you'll leave. But if all you heard, if you just sat there, you heard what I said, but you didn't, you didn't believe it. You didn't really listen. You, 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 hello, you know, and you might say, well, he didn't sound urgent enough or whatever. But see, you didn't attribute value to the Word. You heard the words, the sounds of the Word, but you didn't really hear it because if you really heard it, you would get out. It's the same with the Word of God. See, Jewish rabbis will tell you all the time that, that to hear the Word is to obey it. And if you're not obeying it, you haven't really heard it yet. So let me give you some instructions. How do you use medicine? If, if somebody's got medicine, I remember when my, my mother had medicine and my dad had medicine that, that they were on, and, 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 you know, my dad had more than you could, I mean, he had many of them. And so what's my question when I want to look at the medicine? Well, one is, what is the dosage? Do you think that's important? Do you think that's important? Listen, uh, side, I'll just run quickly down this one. If, if you've got a loved one in a hospital, you know, you ought to have somebody there all the time all the time, checking the dosages that the nurses are administering to them. You know, when Ashley was up in, in Burbank and Donna and I needed to go out one time, we left Jordan. And I told Jordan, you know, you know what she's supposed to get and you know what the dosages are. And any nurse brings something in, you Jordan. And at that time she was probably 15 years old. You tell the nurse, what is it you're going to give her? And you look at your little paper and if it's not right, you don't let her give it. And a nurse walks in, and, and she has a medication for Ashley, and Jordan says, what is it? And, and, and here's what I'm going to give. I'm going to give her 10 whatever, you know. And Jordan says, you're only supposed to be giving her 5. No, no, it's 10. Jordan says, no, they changed it. It's now 5. The nurse goes back, checks the record, and sure enough, it was 5. You know, we've, we've seen people bringing wrong medicine in, wrong dosages in. You don't ever get in a hospital and let those people be the final determiner of what's going to come in your body. Glory to God. What is the dosage is very, very important. Number two is how often do I take it? Well, you know, uh, doctor, I, I'm taking this pill once a week. Once a week, you were supposed to take it, you know, every hour or at least once a day or, you know, it's like, so how often do I take it? Uh, thirdly is what is the best time to take it? What is the best time to take it? You know, even if you take vitamins, you'll see I'm saying best taken with meals. Best taken four hours after a meal. You know, if you understand what uh, probiotics are, but you also understand what an antifungals are, best that you don't take them together. They cancel each other out. You know, so, so knowing when's the best time to take it would be an important thing. Uh, how long should I continue it? You know, how long, how long should I continue it? I mean, is this, am I meant to take it for, for two days or three days or four days? You know, one of the big, big challenges they have with, with antibiotics, first of all, they use them all over the place. That's, that's number one. I mean, they overuse them, and therefore, we get drug-resistant strains that come out, and ah, on and on. 
But listen, the other thing is people don't take them long enough. If they say take it for seven days, they take it for three. All you did in three days is you weakened it, and now it comes back stronger. If it says take it to, for the whole dosage, take it for the whole dosage. So it's important to know how long. And finally, what do you do if it's not working? What do you do if it's not working? So we're going to answer those questions. What we can learn about taking the Word as medicine. First of all, in Proverbs chapter 4, the first things that we are told is to pay attention and listen closely. Pay attention to the Word. Listen closely. Pay attention. Are you paying attention? You know, when, when the Word of God is being preached, are you, are, are you listening intently? I don't want to miss my clue. You know, people say, I'm looking for answers from God. Then listen closely. God, God will speak. In the Amplified Bible, it says, attend to my words, consent and submit to my sayings. Basic English says, give attention to my words. Let your ear be turned to the word. Contemporary Jewish Bible says, pay attention, incline your ear. Message Bible says, listen well to my words, tune your ears to my voice. Now the Hebrew word there is natan. And natan means to incline your ear, but natan literally means to stretch out, lengthen, extend, and spread out. To natan, the word, means you're stretching for it, you're reaching for it, you're lengthening, you're extending your hearing. When you're applying natan to the Word of God, you're listening to what the pastor says, but you're listening to what Holy Spirit's saying to you while the pastor's saying that. You're listening to beyond what the pastor said. You're, you know, that's why many times you hear things and you go back and play the tape and it's not there. Right? Or other times, what happens is you go play the tape and something's there you know I didn't say. How did it get on that CD? You, you sat right there and you didn't hear because at that moment you were thinking about something else. Your ears, instead of stretching to grab, were, were kind of relaxed. See, the word stretch, you've got you to stretch. If you're going to get hold of the Word of God, you're going to have to stretch beyond your comfort zone. You're going to have to hear beyond. You can never sit there hearing for someone else and be doing the talk. I can't stretch for you. Oh, you know, so-and-so should be here today. They, you could use that. No, 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 no. I'm stretching. There's more. There's more. I'm hungry for it. I'm trying to find out. I'm looking. Hebrew word natan. So you have to stretch and pay attention. And then secondly, it says, do not let them out of your sight. And the, and, and the word for sight is ayin. 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 And it leans, means literally put the word of God in front of your eyes. Your eyes are a very important gate You've got to see the Word. That's why I always encourage you, and you do so well. I say, bring your Bible. Open it up. Look. Because, you know, I, I've sat there many times. I've had, I've had my pastor preach to me. I've been sitting there when Pastor Jonathan has been preaching, and suddenly he says, and, and he says what the Word says, and I'm thinking, no. And I look at it, yeah. And I, I mean, I've read the Bible, but suddenly I'm looking right at a sentence. I never saw what he just showed me it said. Had I not had my Bible all open, it would have been very possible for me to say, I dismiss it. I don't agree with that. But see, I see it in my own Word. If you're going to be a follower of the Word, you've got to see it in the Word. You've got to put the Word in front of your eyes. Glory to God. And then keep them within your heart. The Amplified Bible says in the center of your heart. The, the basic English Bible says keep them deep in your heart. Now the Hebrew word for keep is shamar, S-H-A-M-A-R. And it means to keep, to watch, to preserve, to watch over as a watchman, to guard and to defend. Keep them in the center of your being. I'm not talking about your heart pump. <laughs> but take the Word of God in, and then you're going to have to watch over it, keep it, guard it. Now, if the word shamar means keep in the sense of preserving it, watching as a watchman and guarding it, what does that tell me? Why would you have to watch it and guard it? Someone's trying to take it. Absolutely. Someone's trying to take it. And is that not exactly what Yeshua was teaching in the parable of the seed? The thief comes immediately to take the word out of your heart. Immediately. And then all the other things that come into that, uh, to get that seed out of you. The cares of the world come. The opposition of people. All these other things come to do what? Get the word out of your heart. And if you want to keep 
this medicine, you got to learn how to keep it, protect it, get it in you, hold on to it. You know, if you take medicine and then throw it up right after, I know that's a pretty base <laughs> explanation, but you know, if you throw up afterwards, the medicine didn't do you any good. Didn't have time to get into your system, got in your stomach, out it came. Some people are with the word that way. They get it in, go home and throw it up. No, no, no. We got to hold on to the word. And then, then it says this, that these words are life to those who find them and health to a man's whole body. Amplified their life to those who find them, healing and health. Message Bible, those who discover these words live, really live. The, the Hebrew word for find them, these are life to those who find them is matzah, M-A-T-S-A. <laughs> Not matzah like the bread, but matzah. And it means to attain, find, discover, and catch. When I started looking up that word, one of the words, uh, one, one of those words that matzah, the word to catch, to keep, uh, means is to catch it. Anybody watch any of the football games? Man, guy runs quarterback throws a perfect pass, the guy's out there, it's in his hands and he what? Drops it. And 60,000 people who were excited one second are absolutely deflated the next second. Huh? I, I, I'm throwing the word. <laughs> oh, I'm going to catch the word, Pastor. You know, and, and you, you got it, but you, you dropped the word. The, the word matan means to catch it, and that's something that Donna and I say all the time. And you know, we have people get irritated, not you, but we have people get irritated because we say that. It's not what you're taught. It's what you've caught. It's not what you've taught. It's what you've caught. That's why people can be taught and very well knowledgeable about the Bible, but it's not working in their life. That's why economics professors in colleges know a lot about economics, have a lot of knowledge, and they've been taught, and therefore they're teachers, but they haven't caught it because they can't get ahead financially. If you know so much about economics, why are you broke? I mean, you've got the Ph.D. in economics, but when that young man sat in your class in MIT and came up with a distribution idea by which he would gather packages all over the country, fly them into one place, change them back into the planes going back, and fly them back, you gave him a failing grade, you economics professor. So that young man decided to get smart and leave college and put it into practice, and he founded FedEx, which became the model for that matter of distribution. Why couldn't that professor see it? Because that idea had to be caught. Even the teacher couldn't see it because that young man caught a vision. He had a vision one day. Ooh, ooh, you know, it, it doesn't make sense, does it? That I'm going to send a package to Boston and it actually gets on a plane, goes to Memphis, Tennessee, gets put on another plane that comes back to Boston. But when you're doing that with all the packages, that's a very efficient way to do it. Absolutely amazing. But see, he caught the vision, but then those who can't catch it, ridicule it. The Word of God has got to be caught. I was amazed when I went to, to college. I went to a secular college for my first two years. I had a religion professor who was a Unitarian pastor in one of the church. And, and we got talking one day, and I, I made this statement I said, uh, to explain why you do good, good works. And I said this, you know, when, when you know you're born again, you do good works because you want to please God, not to earn anything. But I got as far as saying, when you know you're born again, and he cut me right off and said, nobody can know that. You know, I'm 19 years old, sitting there thinking, this man was probably in his 50s at the time. I'm looking at him and I'm thinking, of course you can. I know it. I mean, you know, you, he, knew, he knew, quote, he knew, he had intellectual understanding, more of Bible passages than I do and where things were and all that, but he hadn't caught the message of the gospel. Come on, John Wesley, ordained Anglican minister, comes over to uh, Georgia, I believe it was, to be a missionary, and, and in his eyes he failed pretty miserably, and, and, and all that he had learned, all the Greek, all the Hebrew, everything, he gets back on that boat to go back to England, and there's some simple folks called Moravians there, and they're praying, and, and he, he's part of their prayer. 
things, and he's moved by the intensity of their faith. And so he writes in his diary, when he got back to England, he goes to a, a little chapel in a place called Aldersgate. That's why so many Methodist churches today are called Aldersgate Methodist Church. And in there, here's how he describes his born-again experience. As I sought the Lord, my heart was strangely warmed by His presence. It was the presence and the reality of what he caught there that turned him into the firebrand preacher he was, bringing millions into the kingdom of God that he didn't have with all his theology. With his theology, he was taught the Bible. But with his experience, he caught it. My, 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 my. So those, uh, they, these words are life to those we could say, instead of who find them, who catch them. Who catch it. Catch it. There's something there. I'm not hearing it. i got to get to it. There's more in here than what I'm saying. I got, you know, I know there is. I know there is. I was studying a passage one time and, and, and looking at it, and Holy Spirit arrested me as I'm just reading through. I'm reading through. He says, you didn't get that. So I went back and I said, okay. So I read that verse over again, and he said, you're still not getting it. I just had that sense. I didn't hear an audible voice. I just had, I, I'm not, there's something there I'm not getting. So then I started to do what? I started to pay attention. I didn't just read it. My morning devotion. Read. No, no. Suddenly I started to pay attention. What is it? What, what am I not seeing there? You know, and, and I looked and I looked and I, <laughs> you know, you can do this with any book, word in the Bible. Because I'm doing as I, I was going to read one to you. I just picked one out and I thought, you can do it with anyone. I mean, I can see it right there. Um, and, and, and it's like, and so I just started, well, okay, now I started to pay attention to the individual words. What is it? What is it? And as, I, as I'm reading along, I, the, you know, the, yeah, it's that word. It's that word. And I'm thinking, well, I know what that word means, but there's something about that word. I mean, I know what it means. Come on, I speak English. But there's something about that word. And so then I began to start researching that word. And realms of understanding opened up. I mean, if, if I hadn't read last night, what, uh, or this week when I was looking at this, or uh, yesterday, the... Uh, the, uh, the, the catching, the, ke uh, the, mar the matza, M-A-T-S-A. If I hadn't looked at I wouldn't have found out that find them also means to catch it. Boy, that exploded in me. That exploded into me. See, there's more. There's more. Glory to God. Now, the word for health, it'll be health to a man's whole body. What's a man's whole body? Well, I believe the Word of God nourishes your soul. Well, it does. I believe it nourishes your spirit, man. Well, it does. But it also nourishes your whole body. The Bible's very clear about that. The Word. Well, well, nourish your body. Well, what part of your body? Any part of your body because it says your whole body. I, I, I don't care if it's headaches. I don't care if it's foot aches. I don't care what it is. The, the Word has the ability to minister health into that part of your body. Glory to God. That's what it says. Now the word health is marpe, M-A-R-P-E, but it comes from the root you all know, Rafa. Rafa. To heal, to repair, and to become fresh. Now catch that. That's what the word Rafa, Rafa means. It's to heal, but it means to repair and to become fresh. Huh? Sometimes we have things in our body that need to be repaired. Huh? Or simply refreshed. Glory to God. Now then next, the, that verse in Proverbs says this. Above all else. What does it mean above all else? I mean, whatever else you're doing, don't forget this piece. Above everything else, guard your heart. For it is the wellspring of life. The basic English says, keep watch over your heart. Amplified Bible, keep and guard your heart with vigilance. Message Bible, keep vigilant watch over your heart. That's where life starts. The contemporary Jewish Bible says, uh, ab above everything else, guard your heart for it's the source of life's consequences. The Hebrew word there is natsar, N-A-T-S-A-R. To watch, to guard, to keep, to preserve. So our, our attitude has got to be to watch, guard, and protect that. Now, if, if a man uh, was on a a rare medication. Well, it actually wouldn't even have to be rare. Let, let's take a good example. If you're going to go to Haiti with us, you're going to go on a trip down there, and, and the person who, who's coming needs insulin on a daily basis. And they know they need it. And they know that two days without their insulin, they're going to be in big trouble. How likely are they to forget their insulin? <laughs> now, they might forget their vitamin C. They might forget some other things. They might forget their toothpaste. They might even forget their underwear. That's happened. <laughs> but
but they're not going to forget their insulin. Why? Because their life is, is dependent on it. I am absolutely amazed. I, I, unfortunately, I'm not surprised anymore. I'm just amazed at people who call themselves Bible Christians, who call themselves Word of Faith Christians, who believe in, in the power of the Scriptures and everything, who have to go to the hospital, and they don't even bring their Bible. They don't bring a cassette player with a, with a teaching thing on it. I mean, I, I've had it over the years, even in congregations, I teach that too. And I show up, you got your toothpaste, you know, you got your book to read or your puzzle to do. Where's your Bible? Oh, 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 pastor, I forgot. I, I mean, you know, come on, that's, that is the most revealing thing. That tells me you do not see the Bible as the most important thing in your life. Not above all else. Above all else when you go to the hospital, bring your Bible. Above all else when you go to some kind of terrible situation, bring your Bible. Above all else, have the Word with you. Above all else. People who all get in their cars and boy, they got all kinds of secular music CDs in their car. Well, where's your Christian music or where's your Christian teaching? Oh, oh, I, you know, they're above all else. Now, I don't say that to judge you. I say it with sadness because therefore you won't get those results. You can't get the results if you're not putting in the work. If it's not that important to you, then you're going to get the consequences. And all the praying in the world is not going to change that. All the praying in the world will not change it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, let's talk about how we use God's medicine in closing. All right? So, what is the dosage? Well, let's put it this way. You can't overdose on the Word of God. You can't overdose on the Word of God. Now, there are people who think you can, and Brother Hagin has an amazing testimony. When Br Brother Hagin was was a, a young boy, I, I want to say probably started when he was 10 or something. He had some kind of a blood disease that in those days uh, they didn't quite know what it was. They certainly didn't know how to, how to uh, cure him of it. And he was getting weaker and weaker to the point he, where he was totally bedfast. I mean, it, would, it, it was just almost impossible for him to move. And everybody concluded that he was going to die. By that point he was a teenage boy. And uh, even his pastor came in and he could hear his pastor in the other room you know, talking to his grandmother saying, you know, there, there, it, it's, it's only going to be a, a, a few more days and he'll be gone. And he heard them in there talking about the funeral arrangements. He was so weak he couldn't talk. He said inside he wanted to shout, I'm not dead yet! But he, but he couldn't get any sound out. And, and the pastor, I mean, this is a pastor, came in, laid his hands on him and said, be patient, my boy, it's a, almost over. You know? And he's in there and he got hold of the Word of God. He got hold of the Word of God. And, and, and so he decided, he didn't know that he had enough days to start from the beginning, so he started from the Gospels. And he just started reading it. And it said it, it would take him five to ten minutes to turn the page. He'd come to the bottom of the page just to get his hand up there and turn that page. And so that's all he did. Morning, afternoon, evening, he laid in bed just reading the Bible. His parents or grandparents, I forget which it was, but they became concerned for him. That's all he does is the Bible. That's all he does. And so that same pastor came in. Well, well, son, you know, they're concerned about you. All you seem to do is, is, is read the Bible. I mean, don't, don't you read any funny books or comic books? Or would you like me to bring you a sports book to read or something like that? Stop and think about it. Is, is that not what we do in the hospital? Oh, I brought you the newspaper because I thought you'd, and I know you miss your crossword puzzle, so I brought you some of that. Come on. Above all else. Well, I'd be bored reading the Bible all day. Hmm? That's all he did, read the Bible. Well, amazing because he got out of bed. <laughs> he got healed. Ministered till into his 70s. 80s, 80s. Glory to God. But they see there are people who think you can overdose on the Word. You can't overdose on the Word. You can't overdose on the Word. Gee, I, I, I walk in your house and you've got Word, word playing on the, over your speakers. You go to bed at night and there's Word playing. 
You know, when, when Ashley was in the hospital, it was, it was amazing because, you know, she'd have to go down for some procedure or something, and, and Donna had a simpler way of saying it. She said to the nurse, you know, when she goes down there, she's hooked up to these tubes. Are they going to go with her? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, Mrs. Long. Yeah. They're going to, they'll take, they'll, you know, she'll be hooked up. Well, they got this heart monitor on her. Oh, yeah, no, that goes right along with her bed. Uh, you know, I mean, that, you know, that, that, we, we make sure she has everything she needs. And so Donna would say, you see this little speaker? It was a pillow speaker hooked up to a little uh, cassette player. You see that little thing there? Yeah. That's as more important than your monitor and her this and her this. I want to make sure that goes with her into that procedure and it stays on. We'll tape it to the bed so, you know, you know. I mean, they're not used to people walking in there with the Word of God playing in her ear. Come on, she's in a coma. We got the Word of God playing in her ear. It's just as important. It's more important. Above all else. See, we read it. Above all else. Well, what, what does it mean above all else? I had a parishioner years ago here in, in, in Fitchburg. He was in one of the hospitals and he had cancer. And, and I'm, I'm asked to come up and pray for him. And, you know, I prayed, read scriptures with him and everything, gave him the Bible, underlined, gave some books on healing. I came back the next day and he's sitting there laying in bed watching uh, as the stomach turns, you know. I mean, one of those. I said to him, don't ask me to pray for you. I mean, I'm trying to do something, and you're watching garbage. You're watching people die. You're watching negative stuff. That's what's coming into you. And then you say to me, Pastor, would you pray for me? And then I pray you're not healed, and you blame God. Well, I guess it wasn't God's will. No, God's will is clear. You're not doing anything toward it. You're not helping. You're not helping. Glory to God. So, what's the dosage? As much as you can take. As much as you can take. Glory to God. And if you're a little child and, 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 you know, the words are too big, we even have, we even have children's versions of it, just like children's vitamins. Huh. How often do you take it? Isn't that what you want to know? How often do you take your medicine? Well, let me tell you this. A maintenance dosage is daily. To maintain health, you do it daily. When you're under attack, you need to increase the frequency. See, you know, some people think, oh no, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm coming down with something or I'm under attack, I'm, I'm going to go take a medicine, a, a vitamin. I'll start taking vitamin C's. Well, you know, vitamin C's work best if you have them constantly going through your system. You know? So, you know, you can do something when you're under attack, but if you don't have a maintenance dosage in there, some people take something, they go back up and down, up and down. No, you need a maintenance dosage of vitamins in your life. <laughs> oh no, you're vitamin deficient, let's pump them all in you, but then you don't do what you need to take to maintain that level, and it goes back down. Same thing with the Word of God. A maintenance dosage to keep you healthy is daily. The Word of God in your life, daily. By the way, when it says, my Word is medicine, my Word is health, well, what part of the Word? All of it. All of the Word. You can get encouraged reading the begats. <laughs> <laughs> if you know how to read them. <laughs> Glory to God. So, maintenance dosage is daily, but when you're under attack, increase your frequency. Increase your frequency. You're being sued by somebody, or you got some bad news coming, or you have an appointment that you don't like, then you get verses in the Bible, God is on my side, who will be against me, and you read them, and you read them how? Out loud, out loud. You put your Bible away, you go do your housework, you go do whatever you're doing, you do your work there, and then, you know, an hour later, you know, you, you, you read them out loud again, you say them again. Why? You're pumping yourself full. You're getting prepared. You're getting prepared for the battle. You're getting prepared for the battle. What do they do when people are going in for surgery? They try to get you built up before the surgery. You know, they got to get your system. Fun. They, so we, you know, you need the surgery, but, you know, you got so many things wrong with you, and, and, and you're weak, and you're this, and you're this. we got to get your body built up to, a, to a, a, a level of strength where we can do the surgery. Well, I say to Christians, if you're going for some kind of anything, you have an appointment for a job interview, do you build yourself up with a word before you go to the job interview? Or do you throw out a, God will take care of me and walk out there? Or do you build yourself up? Build yourself up with expectation. Build yourself up with what the Word of God says. Third thing, when is the best time to take it? <laughs> As a preventative, you take it prior to attacks. But you always take it in the midst of an attack. Huh? You know, when's the best time to take water when you're going to Haiti? Before you get there. Be, hydrate your body before you get there. Scott will always tell you that. 
Get your body hydrated. We tell you that when you go to Israel. Uh, the week before, start drinking. Get a lot of, because, you know, you're going to be in a dehydrating environment. Okay? So, you know, the best time to take it is as a preventative. Be taking it before the attack. But in the midst of an attack, you definitely need to be. Amen? How long should you continue it? The rest of your life. And people, well, how long do I have to do the Bible? Wait a minute. That same person will go to the doctor and he says, here's a heart medication, and by the way, you're going to be on it the rest of your life. And he'll turn to people, well, this is my heart medication, I'm going to be on, on it the rest of my life. Here, here's my uh, kidney medication, I'm going to be on it the rest of my life. Here's my this, I'm going to be on it to the rest of my life. Just part of my, my habit. I, I do it every day because of what? It's part of my, for the rest of my life. And then we'll say, the Bible's got to be part of your life the rest of your life. And people say, oh, you're getting too religious. <laughs> Excuse me. That's why the Word will not be medicine for you. If it's medicine for you, it's going to be medicine the rest of your life. Amen. And then finally, what do you do if it doesn't seem to be working? Well, again, what do you do if your medicine isn't working? You know, your doctor gives you this medicine to take care of something, and, and it doesn't seem to be working. What's the first thing you do? You go back to the doctor, and what do you say? It's not working. Why do you go to the doctor? Because you think he may have an answer. Why is it that when people get advice and counsel in the body of Christ to do something, and they come to the conclusion the advice isn't working, they don't go, don't go back to the pastor and say, it doesn't seem to be working? Why do they just, I just stop doing it? Well, you know, that didn't work. I tried it for three days, didn't work. And I guess the pastor, it might work for others, doesn't work for me. They, they don't come back and say, you know, I did what you said, but it doesn't seem to be working. That's very rare in the body of Christ. Absolutely amazes me. Excuse me. Don't, don't you want to find out why it's not working? Or have you, usually what people say is, I knew it wouldn't work. Well, if you knew it wouldn't work, of course it's not going to work. But listen, you go back to the doctor and say, it doesn't seem to be working. What is typically the answer the doctor gives? Up the dosage. You're absolutely right, Scott. He doesn't try something else. First off, he says, let's increase the dosage. Let's increase the dosage. Okay, I thought 10 milligrams would take care of you. Let's double it. Isn't that what they say? That same person will come to me and say, Pastor, you told me I need to read my Bible half an hour every morning. I should be reading it 15 minutes every night to deal with the situation I'm in. I'm doing that, and Pastor, I'm just not, not uh, it just doesn't seem to be working. I said, well, that's simple. Double the dosage. Oh, yeah, what good's that going to do? I mean, I'm reading the Bible here. You want me to double the dosage. You would never say that to the doctor. You go back and call your mom on the phone and say, oh, doctor, double my thing. This, we're, we're hoping that'll work. Well, why don't you go home and say, well, the pastor told me to read an hour in the day, and we're hoping that'll work. See, we don't apply, when it comes to the area of faith, we apply none of the things that we've been trained to apply when it comes to the medical world. If all we did in the area of faith as medicine applied the same things we do in the medical world, we would start seeing victory in the body of Christ. But people don't do that. They don't do that. They don't treat leadership in, in the body of Christ the way they treat the leadership of the doctor. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm, I'm just giving you truth. Come on, the Word is medicine. It works. We take it and it works. We know people who take it and it works. We know what to do when it's not working. We go to find out. We, you know, I, I, I know where, I know where my, my heroes of faith are. I know who I listen to. Keith Moore has a, a set of, I actually brought it down. I think, there's, I think there's about 20 sermons he's got on healing. You can get them free. No, no, no excuse for not being able to download it if you have a computer. If you don't know how, ask Tim. He'll show you. And then download it and you can put it on a CD and play it. Free. Well, they're not really free. Nothing in life is free. They're free to you because others give. And by the way, one of the things our church did this year is we invested $1,000 in his ministry of doing that. The word supply, the word supply it's called. Everything. Everything's given away. You don't have to buy his CDs. You don't have to buy his messages. They're all there and they're given away free. He's not trying to make money on it. He's trying to get the word out. But, you know, it's like, I, you know, I, I, I've learned, and, 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 and I keep trying this, but I've learned it, this is not the way to do it. You know, somebody, oh, my relative is sick, and they think, can you go see him? Can you help him? And I bring them a book on healing, and I bring a thing, and I bring this, and you know what? They don't even read them. 
or in the body of Christ. I got Christians who, you know, here's, so here's, here's a set of, of, of six CDs. I'm going to leave the six CDs with you and, and, and listen through them all day long. And I go back a week later, and it's like, did you let, well, I, I, I've started the first one. I don't get it. I just don't get it. What it is is a lack of faith. You really don't believe the Word of God will do that for you. But you do believe that what the doctor's saying. Then you're going to get the results the doctor's saying you're going to get. But God says, I've got a plan. If my people would simply do what my Word says, they'll get the answers. They'll get the answers. If it doesn't seem to be working, we say, double, double the dosage. What's the second thing he's likely to say? Increase the frequency. All right, you're taking this pill once a day. Let's try taking it twice a day. Now, why does the doctor keep telling you? Why does he keep telling you? Well, increase it. Do it. Because he believes that that medicine, if properly applied, should work. He's trying to figure out why it's not working in your life. You know, many times he doesn't ask the real question. Are you really taking it? three times a day, because most often that's the answer. People are not taking it the way it's meant to. But maybe because of your body chemistry or something, you do need a bigger dosage or, or whatever else. But see, he's absolutely convinced this pill should take care of that issue. I know how to get your blood pressure down. You know, I'm going to give you this pill and it's going to take your blood pressure down. I know that will work. I know it. And if it's not working, I'm going to do something else. See, he's convinced of it. Matter of fact, he's so convinced of it, he won't even consider an alternative. <laughs> even if you have one that's better. <laughs> but see, he's convinced. I'm going to keep doing it. I'm going to keep doing it. We've got to get that attitude about the Bible. Hold the Word. Guard the Word. It is medicine. It is health to you. It's vital to your life. If it doesn't seem to be working, increase the dosage and increase the frequency. We on the same page? It's right in, your, it's right in there. It's right in there. It's right in there. Do you know the Bible says that laughter is good medicine? Huh? Laughter is good medicine? You need to learn to laugh. Look at yourself in the mirror. <laughs> Find out whatever it takes. But you see, there's another piece to that. Eventually, what, what God says is, I put in front of you a way of life, a way of death. You choose. The way of life, when people find it, here's something they want to do. They want to share it. They want to share it. You know, I mean, if you find an answer to something, what do you want to do? <laughs> you want to tell people, right? That goes true on the other side. You know, when people don't have life, you know what they do? They share it. Because it's a spiritual war. We don't wrestle with flesh and blood, but principalities and powers. There are messages out there that are designed to come into my life to build me up. There are messages out there that are designed in my life to pull me down. God wants to send people across my path, things that I can read, things that I listen to, uh, the Word of God coming, tapes into my life to build me up, to encourage me, to give me wisdom about things in life. But you know what? The devil's out there. He's got a plan for your life. And just as Jeremiah says, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you, the devil could likewise say, and I know the plans I have for you. <laughs> my plans are to discourage you, defeat you, and kill you. Plans, active plans. So you've got to evaluate what's coming into your life. What's coming into your life. A absolutely amazing the revelation of truth that's come into the body of Christ in the last 20 years. Specifically the last 10 when it comes to simply health. I mean all over the place you turn. People are talking about health. James Robinson was talking about health. Uh, Kenneth Copeland's talking about health and what you... He says, yeah, I don't eat that pork stuff. <laughs> Very interesting. Uh, absolutely amazing. Talking about health. Keith Moore was talking about health. Who's that guy from uh, uh, Ohio? The, the evangelist. The big fiery guy. Big tall guy. Yeah, you know who I... You got the picture in the head. He, 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 he got off on, man, he was on a show one day talking about how his triglycerides were, were just so normal. I don't even know what triglycerides were. But oh, they were here and they were here and they were here. And you know, and, and, and I just started doing healthy things. God wants you to do healthy things. Amen? We're looking for miracles and instant cures. God says if we would just eat right. But you know, that message gets people so stirred up in the body of Christ. 
Absolutely amazing. While there are people who are turned on, they're spit. Oh, I don't want to hear any more about that stuff. Well, then die. But don't come to me and say, you know, would you pray for me? But, you know, it's like, how can I pray away what you're eating? And, and why has God raised that up in this country so much? Because the country's sick. And he's trying to teach us. And when we wouldn't listen to the natural health people, then he got it into the ministry. And all over we got pastors talking about it. Rod Parsley, that's who it was. Rod Parsley. Rod Parsley, you know? You know, God wants his ministers well. He wants all his children well. He wants us healthy. But sometimes you can't talk about things like that. No. Take it to heart. Say, my goodness, what's going on? What's going on? Now, in it, in the midst of, of, of natural things, because, I mean, God des designed our bodies to heal ourselves if we'd quit polluting them. But in the midst of that, there's a level of faith that overrides anything in the natural. Faith always overrides anything in the natural. Back, I want to end with this story because it, I, I think you need to understand, uh, if you got your choice, I'm going to go with God before I'm going to go with anything out there. Amen. When Ashley was very tiny and, and was diagnosed with leukemia, uh, they put her on a protocol, a chemo, chemo pro protocol that was new and experimental. I mean, my goodness, this was 20-some years ago. Uh, down at UMass. And the doctor said to, the oncologist said to Donna, this is a very, very potent mix of, of chemicals uh, and, uh, it, and, and you've got to sign papers because you can't sue us because we're telling you right up front, more, more than likely she won't survive. If, if she survives, you know, this part, then she, the, the effect of the chemicals might do this and on and on and on and on. And then they went through this thing that said, and we've got to measure them, I mean, down to the minutest level because it, it's by body weight. And she's so small that we got to be very careful because it would be very easy to overdose her. I mean, this was her thing. That, you know, I mean, okay, if we got to increase it, remember what happens if it's not working, increase it? We'll increase it just as little milli, milli, milli microgram more because, you know, it would be so easy to overdose her and kill her. So they had this, this solution that had to be injected into her. And so, I don't know, was, was it every day or whenever it was? You know, Donna had this syringe and she just would inject it into a, a tube that Ashley had. And, uh, but they're going to monitor. Now, what are they monitoring for? They're monitoring, the first thing they're monitoring is their white blood cells. Because the chemical is going to kill the white blood cells, the platelets. And they got to make sure they don't, don't wipe her out because then all you have to do is sneeze at her and boom, she's gone, you know. And, and it's like, so they're monitoring very carefully because their expectation is, yeah, it's always going to go down. We're going to give her this chemical, boom, it's going to start killing good things as well as bad things. And then if we increase, ooh, it's really going to kill. So that's what they're monitoring. Well, after about a, a, a week or two of that, they come in and they say, you know, we're, we're, we're puzzled because her white count's not going down. So we're going to increase the dosage. Now, they've already said it's very dangerous to increase the dosage. But obviously, we're not giving her enough because her white counts aren't, aren't even going down. So they increase the dosage. They bring her back the next week. They still haven't gone down. Boy, this is really puzzling us. We better increase the dosage. Now, wait a minute. You're the guys that told us that it's very dangerous to increase the dosage. And now you're increasing the dosage of this potent, you know, chemical to kill bad things. But, but it's going to kill good things. But none of the good things are being killed. I think they increased that dosage, I don't know, four or five times. It was just a constant thing where finally they scared themselves. I mean, literally, the oncologist one day, this is not right. I mean, the dosage they were giving her at that point should have killed her, would have killed an adult, you know. I mean, and, 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 and so he's having this conference, and Donna's standing there, and I'm standing there, and I said, well, doctor, I said, you know, you need to know what Donna says, Donna and Ashley together, when they give her this medicine. They have a little ritual, and they go through it. As she injects it, they both say together, this, th this poison will have no more effect on my body than as, it, as if it were water. And instead of hurting her, it will refresh her. I said, doctor, if she had been injecting water in her body all this time, what would have happened to the white counts? Nothing. They would have stayed where they are. And what you're telling me is they stayed where they are. I mean, he just, I mean, his eyes were big like that because how... You know, you're speaking to it and it's not poisoner. Seems to me we have a biblical promise that even if I eat any deadly poison, 
it will not harm me. Now, so you either believe that or you don't. If you're, if you're there telling people, well, the doctor's got us on this, but it may kill her, why would you ever say that? See, Donna never said that. This is what we talk about now after we're already through that. We don't go, well, that got her in chemo and it may kill her. We're not talking that. Why would we give words to a possibility we don't agree with? You know, she's healed. She's healed. She's healed. Finally, the doctor comes in after other tests, and he says, we've only come to one conclusion. Her body is a platelet factory. In other words, the chemo's really killing them, but her body, for some strange reason, is producing them by the hundreds of millions faster than the chemo kills them. I, I, absolutely amazing. I mean, that's just one of, one of, uh, uh, of many things where you've you got to see faith. Faith speaks. Faith speaks. You're not bound by those things. When she was uh, in that coma down at UMass, uh, you know, a few years back, and, and she's there, and they got her hooked on all these machines, and they're doing all these levels, and they had already asked us if we had a living well for her because, you know, she's going to be, she can't make it. I mean, they sent us from Gardner down there because there's no way she's going to be alive. And down there, they said, well, even if she did live, she'd be in a nursing home in a coma the rest of her life as a vegetable. I mean, that, that's what they're given. And so they got this machine monitoring her there, and Donna's standing there, and here comes in this technician, and she said, well, you know, these levels, uh, you know, aren't where they need to be yet. And Donna asked a simple question. What level does that need to be? What, what, are you, what level does that need to be? And they, uh, she said, well, uh, you know, I don't know. If they're a 7, they need to be at a 12 or whatever. And Donna said, okay. So, the, you know, the technician went about her business, and Donna's over there, in the name of Yeshua, I decree. And I speak to you, body. You will come back in line. You will be what it said. Heal. The word is healing. It refreshes. It restores. So she starts speaking refreshing and restoring to Ashley's body. How can she do that? Ashley's in a coma. It's actually nice to deal with people in a coma because then they can't argue with you. <laughs> they're, they're, you know? So she's speaking and speaking, speaking to the brain cells, speaking to the body, speaking to that. And all of a sudden, this little technician comes back and she looks at the machine. She says, oh, my God. And Don says, what? She said, the counts have risen to right where they need to be. That was like in, in a half hour time, got to exactly where they need to be. Absolutely. I mean, see, why? You either believe the Bible or you don't. But we've been educated to believe what the world says. And we've got to be educated to what the Word of God says. Amen? Now, those are going to be your choices in life. Choices in life. People are going to tell you you have to live with things you don't have to live with. Amen. Amen? I mean, last week, remember when Doug was here? I thought it was so neat hearing Doug and Rosie. I mean, Doug was a walking disaster. He was. Doug had, and, and, and he didn't, he's not operating out of a lot of faith, as we would call it. He's just operating out of in natural things. Why? Because God wants to heal people. <laughs> God's got things that will help you. God's trying to get him through. I mean, you know, and he couldn't bend over. Now he bends over. Now he, he can sit, he can run, he can do all these things that he couldn't do before. He's lost weight, but it's more than lost weight. He, I mean, you know, it's, uh, why? He changed his diet, <clears throat> added some things in that God has brought in. Why does God bring those things in? Because, you know, the church, God wants you well. <laughs> God wants you well. But the, here's the secret. If, if it works, somebody should be well. We should be seeing people well. I mean, that's, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's testimony. Amen. It's not theory. It's what do you catch. And when somebody catches it, they become an evangelist for it. I, I don't care if it's a pill they took that, you know, some vitamin they took. And, hey, I took it and I don't have kidney stones anymore. Never had them in my life, blah, 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 blah. Well, man, if you've got kidney stones, you're going to say, I, what did you do? I want to try that. I want to take that. Excuse me? Why would I not? Well, that, some doctor said that doesn't work. Well, let him get ki kidney stones. When he gets kidney stones, he'll try it. <laughs> yeah, what's the newest one? Hydrangea. Yeah, hydrangea. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> what the Indians use. Isn't it amazing what Indians use and people in the third world have learned to use and everything? Why? Because God can speak to them. Our society has conditioned us not to believe. Not to become believers about anything. And God says, my word has all you need. You've got to get the word in you. 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 It's truth. It's truth. It's truth. Amen? I don't care what the facts in the natural are. 
God has a truth that's bigger than the facts in the natural. The truth was Lazarus had been dead in the tomb. The truth was he stinketh by now. I mean, that was a fact, yeah. Yeshua came and said, Nazareth, come forth. And he did. And he did. The truth was that man was born blind. Now, the facts were. Truth was, God wanted to heal him and did. The fact was that that man by the, by the temple gate couldn't walk. The truth was what Peter had. What he had to give. He had something to give. He had something to give. What I have, I give you. Now, if I have an answer in the natural to give you, what kind of a person would I be if I didn't give it to you? At least to offer it. Well, if I have an answer in the spiritual, come on. Why wouldn't I want to give that? Why would I sit and listen to people talk about aches and pains and dying and not say, let's pray? How about if I lay hands on you? How about if we believe together? Oh, I tried that and it didn't work. Oh, well, you know, somebody had tried something with a doctor and it didn't work. They doubled the dose and they learned to do it right and took it right and it worked. See, the Word, the Word of God, we've had it in our hands all along. Do you know what they're finding in the Amazon jungles? There's thousands, thousands of natural things in the Amazon jungle that they haven't even gotten around to test yet, but what they're already finding out is how many of them are cures. Who put them in that jungle? Man didn't come up with a thing. They, they, these, are not, these are not things that man cultivated and grew. These are, yeah, the leaves of the trees are for the healings of the nations. Sitting right out there. You know, what a, what a shame that you're in Sao Paulo and you got a, a disease that 50 miles away in the jungle there's a little flower that if you brewed it in a tea and took it, it would take care of that. What a shame that you have a Bible that's not 50 miles away, it's not 5 miles away, it's right in your own house and it has answers. What a shame to go without answers and it's in the book. It's in the container. We've got to get this out of here. Into our mouth. Take it by mouth. <laughs> Three times daily. And see what happens. You can...